Hi everyone. Welcome to another A Healthy New Zealand video, where we encourage you to eat well, live life and feel great. If you like this video, would you please give us a like and share to help spread the message. Today, I'm talking about the difference between being overweight and overfat and why understanding this difference matters. Healthy fat cells are very important. Fat provides a large source of energy for our body, as well as insulation and protection for muscles and organs. Fat is the largest endocrine organ. It releases a lot of special proteins and hormones that talk to the rest of our body. It is also plays an important role in our immune system. The terms underfat, normal fat and overfat were first introduced by researcher Dr. Phil Maffetone, who investigated the prevalence of these conditions around the world. As you can see from this graph, up to 76% of the world's population is overfat. This has serious consequences for our health. As the rates of overfat have increased, so too has type 2 diabetes, heart disease and cancers, particularly breast and prostate cancer. So even though we may not like having bigger hips, thighs and buttocks, the fat we store in these areas is called subcutaneous fat because it sits just under our skin. And this is a lot healthier than storing fat around our waist. When we have too much fat in these areas, it's called overweight. Excess fat stored around our waist is less healthy. When we accumulate too much of this, it's called overfat. Even people of normal weight can be overfat. Very fit and otherwise slim athletes may sometimes fit into the normal weight overfat category as well. The reason a large waist is a problem is because it is often associated with visceral fat. This forms deep inside your belly area and around your organs. In general, the larger your waist, the more visceral fat you're likely to have. Visceral fat causes disruption to our fat cells, so they become sick. Visceral fat behaves differently from the subcutaneous fat that we get on our buttocks and hips. This kind of fat sends out hormones that cause insulin resistance as well as inflammatory cytokines that downregulate our immune system. This makes us a lot more vulnerable to obesity, diabetes, heart disease and cancers. So even though we may not like that subcutaneous fat on our hips and thighs, it's a much safer place to keep it. The question is, how big is too big? Everyone is different, and I will talk more about genetic differences and body fat distribution in another video. But there are some general guidelines about the size of our waistlines that may be helpful. A very quick indicator is to measure your waist. If you're a woman, ideally you want to be under 80 centimetres. Your risk of poor health greatly increases over 88 centimetres. Men are aiming for under 94 centimetres with significantly increased risks over 102 centimetres. Your waist height ratio is another very good way to assess your visceral fat and this is a more individualized measurement. Ideally, you want your waist to be less than half your height. So measure both and then double your waist measurement. If it's more than your height, you are considered overfat. If you'd like to find out more details about your waist to height ratio, we have a calculator available on our website at susanbirch.co.nz. If you are overfat, it's a good idea to check out a few other markers to assess your metabolic health. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your blood pressure. If this is too high, nutritional changes often help lower it without using drugs. 
blood tests can also help identify if your fat is healthy or sick. We're looking for optimal ranges with these markers rather than the laboratory ranges. This is because we want to pick up metabolic dysfunction before it progresses into full-blown diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Elevation of three or more of these, along with too much abdominal fat, indicates metabolic dysfunction. Pay attention to normal HbA1c and fasting glucose levels with high insulin and triglycerides. This is an early indicator of high insulin and can occur years prior to a diabetes diagnosis. This is associated with an increased risk for other chronic diseases such as heart attacks, strokes, cancers, PCOS, and Alzheimer's disease. You can find a list of these tests on the website, so you don't need to remember them all. There are other blood tests that are useful, but these are some of the basic ones to get you started. If you found this video, would you please like and share? If there are any topics you would like to hear about, please let us know. Thank you for watching. Together, let's get a healthy New Zealand.